Hey guys, I managed to drive to Michigan to be with my friends Sean and Kevin and we're going to talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and so much more. Cowabunga. Cow <laughs> I think they started saying Cowabunga about 2 o'clock yesterday. <laughs> so the Kickstarter started yesterday and to no surprise to me, they're at about, well, I just had it up, they're at 490000 and it has not quite been 24 hours yet. So any predictions on how far you're going to go? We don't really know. We're hoping it goes to the moon, man. Well, I have a, <laughs> I have an idea. I've watched a lot of Kickstarters. I've had a chance to partake in some. And you're still going pretty strong. You know, if, if, if your Kickstarter trends like all other Kickstarters, you're going to taper off here until about your last two days. And then you're going to go, what, yeah. man? Yeah. Um, which is a good thing. And I, so the ones that I've watched, generally around day seven, you could almost double to triple that number. Mm -hmm. right. Usually it's like, it's kind of like working in retail. By one o'clock, double these numbers, that's what you're going to close at. Right, <laughs> right, right. Um, but anyway, so when did this all start? I mean, the email said nine months ago, but I, I kind of think it started a lot farther back than that. Well, back in 1985. <laughs> <laughs> so some history on that. Back in 1985. Well, you asked when did it all start. That's when it all started with back a little in, black yeah. and white comic book by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. That they made out of their garage. And, and honestly, I didn't even know what they were until I bought the role-playing game. Cool. Which I probably bought in 1986. And, I don't know, we probably played it pretty heavily in high school. And then I'm not sure I've touched the game since 92. Still have a book. Still has coffee stains. A little bit beat up from moving a few times. But we made a lot of characters, that's for sure. Yeah, a lot of people love making characters out of this game. It yeah, was the, so much fun. Well, I mean, the, come on, you can make any mutant animal you can imagine so yep. you know from your pet dog or cat or hamster to you know lions tigers bears mastodons dinosaurs i mean you could do it all yep and uh well before we get too far into that how hard was it to work with nickelodeon to get the license um not very hard at all um they uh i, I first of all i think our reputation preceded us it did um, you know, Kevin Eastman uh, and Peter Laird only have good things to say about us. Yeah, so that helps. I think when they, you know, inquired about us, they went, oh, yeah, these are good guys. And uh, and I think they're, they're just very familiar for our stuff. Uh, Nickelodeon had actually reached out to me in 2015 to do the Turtles, but just things were going on and we just couldn't give it the attention we really, you know, wanted to give it. And then we thought about it again in 2019 um and explored some possibilities and then uh you know when sean came on board as my business partner and creative director uh i, I think he was here five minutes when he said Kev, you should do we should do ninja turtles again i wasn't even here yet <laughs> kevin asked me to be his business partner well, that's true we talked about and we, it we talked about it before i even agreed actually <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was so crazy. That was a whole other story. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, I couldn't sleep for an entire night and almost two days. Um, but, yeah, that was one of the first things we talked about was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because it's the first role-playing game that I ever owned. I, I had played the Big Red D&D box with my mm -hmm. buddies in middle school and some West End Star Wars. Um, and I was really into Battletech, so I knew about movement and fighting and, you know, tactical mm -hmm. games. But... The Turtles came in, and I was a big Turtles cartoon fan. And then when I turned 10, I felt like a big kid because my uh, my dad's best friend, my Uncle Mark, he, uh, he gave me a bunch of the graphic novels. And I was like, whoa, there's blood <laughs> and violence, and I'm a big kid now, you know? And I thought it was so cool. And then one of my friends at school was like, hey, I'll trade you some of that, that old Battletech stuff you're not using for you know this for this Ninja Turtles RPG it, it's got art like in the comic books that you like and I was like oh yeah okay I traded it just for that and you know to see if it was a cool game and it was the first game I ever owned first one I you know read cover to cover 
played it with my cousins and my friends and, and yeah and 40 years later here I am you know so so yeah Kevin Kevin Kevin's like hey you want to you want to join me at Palladium Books and we can ride off into the sunset and I was like well, I do like the turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, we had a lot of fun playing turtles. So my high school career was, we we probably well we started with. I think the first thing I ever played was Village of Hamlet for D and D, and then we got into the red box, a little bit, and we got into the blue box, and there was another box I think, but I don't remember what color it was, and then we pretty much went right into AD and D in second edition. Somewhere in there, from like eighty four to eighty six, I bought that book. And then from there, I bought the Coalition War Campaign. Oh, that was a great. And I'm like, game. where are the rules? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> so I drove back to Parma that day, which was like 35 minutes, and I bought the rule book. And then shortly after that, we played some Palladium. We pretty much played Rifts, D and D, Teenage Mutant Turtles. That was our. Pretty much our high school career. And yeah, that's a lot of people. Actually. We we were those people that locked themselves in the basement <laughs> on the weekends. <laughs> so we'd always party at my grandfather's house. He would make a big pot of bean, red yeah. beans and rice. He had like endless soda, you know, Coca Cola, Seven Up, uh, or Sprite, whatever whatever the the Coca Cola brand is. And yeah, we would just we we game all day Saturday. I mean, there's no computers. There's no there was phones, but there's no cell phones. I mean, it was just a different life. Oh yeah, you know. Well, we would just I had a dive computer. into the gaming. You know, I mean, I used dial up AOL. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. On, so. on a Commodore 64. You're dating yourself. You're, I am. Really are. I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I am. I mean, Elder Scrolls was 16 discs. <laughs> Three and a half inch floppies. Oh wow. Wow. I, yeah, I, 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 I guess. still own them. Yeah. <laughs> that might be a collector's item by now. It's probably, wait, that's considered an antique, right? Oh, yeah. I would think. I wish I had the Vic. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so so that was one of those things that when um, I joined Kevin here at Palladium, he was very patient with me because I was like, the, the, the turtles, but we can do the turtles and. Um, you know, we reached out and uh, formally made contact, um, and it, we didn't realize that a lot of things had changed because Viacom had bought or merged with Paramount um, and, and took on the Paramount name, yep. and then they got Nickelodeon. And so, when we reached out um, this year, my old contact, the old from 2015, were, was oh, gone. Oh. Were gone, we or thought, oh. different divisions or For whatever, sake, right? So know. we're like, oh my gosh, you know, and we thought that was going to be a big setback. But we, the people we worked with, are great people. Yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, one of them, he was just so excited. He's actually has. He's like, I have the games back here in shrink yeah, wrap. Yeah. You know, he's a collector. In shrink wrap. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he's yeah. crazier than I am. Or plastic bags or whatever. You yeah. know, but he said in plastic. So <laughs> you know, but but it was just really cool that. He's a fan, and a lot of the people had heard heard really great things about us. And then the other thing that's been amazing is, as we've made contact. Well, first they were like, "You should meet this guy, Freddie Williams." I don't know if you've heard of this artist, Freddie Williams. I gave Freddie his first professional job. Yeah, so oh Freddie has become this huge. And the ninja, stars align. Right, <laughs> yeah, he has become this huge Ninja Turtles and other comic artists, right? And then, um, oh my god. And then uh, we're like, yeah, we've heard of Freddie Williams, and um, and then we met Sophie Campbell, who uh, she's writing on uh, the current IDW yeah. Turtles, has done a lot of art for it. And great human being, great person, yeah. and uh, she we didn't know is such a huge fan. She has a similar origin story to me. Yeah. She found the Turtles through the RPG. She's now you know this many years later in the industry doing Turtles comics. She runs a Palladium game, uh, Heroes Unlimited, every week. Yeah. So oh, wow. she's a true fan. There's a lot of actually like after the bomb uh, references in the co in the new yeah. uh, comics. The there's comics a there's a writes, there's a band yeah. called After the Bomb, um, and there's there's like it sounds like that should be a bar, right? It does. It's a cool. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, but it was just really neat. A lot of people have been in, been way more influenced by the original role playing game than we ever thought possible. Yeah, I was gonna say that, and, 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 and so that's really made it a really cool thing as we were uh, doing the negotiations and, and all that stuff takes time and. Nine months is actually really short for a, you know, Hollywood deal, I guess. But we, uh, yeah. Well, you pulled move. it together. Well, well, I mean, and, and it's amazing. I mean, I mean, just to build on what Sean said, I think the other reason we were able to get the license back is that this game and the source books have influenced so many people and are so loved by so many people. I mean, it yeah. turns out. 
Ciro Neely, uh, hopefully I didn't uh, butcher yeah, his sure name. Ciro Nielly, or um, yeah. who, who, who was the showrunner for um, the 2012 TMNT CGI series. He was a big fan of the books. In fact, he wanted the Terror Bears in there. In fact, his his, uh, <laughs> his episode of the Dream Beavers, that's his kind of tribute to the Terror Bears. Um, he's going to be part of this Kickstarter, too. He's going to do a piece of art for, for the book and uh, yeah. write a, a remembrance. We had all kinds of people writing remembrances and yes. drawing tribute pages and and... and like almost everyone we contact, they're like, "Oh yes, I'm in because I love, I love the game, I love Palladium," and I'm like, "Wow, you know, really? Yeah. I mean, it's just everyone is. It's just amazing how much impact this game. I mean, I knew, you know, a million plus people played the game, but I didn't realize how many people had gone on to do things creative. Yeah, creative things, right. exactly. Right. Well, I, you know, I could tell you hands down that. Between Dungeons and Dragons, Rifts, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ninjas and Super Spies, even some James Bond that I played, I am definitely a more creative person. Right. Well, I think right. definitely. I think, Hands I, think down. I think a lot of people are more creative than they and, give and I'm themselves not credit for. Well, yeah, they are, well, but, but I mean, it's, but, but no, it, it pushes it, it, you. It, it does, and it, it, it's a way to express your creativity, right? Yeah. You're, you're creating stories, or you're playing a character, or you're understanding that character's story or viewpoint within, yeah. a, a, you know, a, a, that greater narrative. Um, you're describing actions. Um, I mean, these are all things that we kind of take for granted, but when I went to the University of Texas in Dallas, they have a big neuroscience program and, a big, and also a big gaming program. And um, I was in the gaming, uh, game design program, um, design and production program for like animated movies and video games. And, um, but I also attended a bunch of stuff with people from the AI and neuroscience, like physical human neuroscience. They're very complementary uh, disciplines to have in the same university as well. And we would have discussions about this stuff because role playing has applications in therapy. It can help oh, people. Yeah. In all types of people, oh, and, yeah. and, and and learn and grow and 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 what I'm saying is just, it's yeah sure it has that application, but it also it's like it's like any other, a lot of other not any other but a lot of other pastimes and sports are going to have other things that they build up, but instead of like with baseball there's a lot of teamwork there's a lot of muscle and and cardiovascular fitness. With role playing, there's a lot of creativity yeah. and teamwork and yeah. cooperative yeah. storytelling, and and those are flex flexing parts of your mind that wouldn't maybe get flexed otherwise. Yeah. So that leads me to a question for all of you: How many of you are being pushed, or think you're being pushed, that you may end up as content writers, or would like to know how to connect with content writers? Comment. Well, and that's and that's for instance, what's one of the reasons that Kevin and I think that the the Rifter is so important. Yeah. And when I when I joined Palladium, the first thing I worked on was Rifter eighty five, which we we did as an annual. Um, and uh, Rifter eighty six, it's a little delayed because our editor in chief Wayne um, has had COVID this year and then fell off a roof recently. Ow! And it's been really busy. Yeah. <laughs> so we're. That's why uh, he didn't move much at Gen Con, huh? Well, he, no, he was right at Gen Con. Was Gen right Con. after Gen oh. Con. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, you know, and, and so, but he, he, but, you know, for instance, a lot of fans are like, oh, are you still going to do the Rifter? Yes. That's oh, absolutely yeah. a number one <laughs> yeah. priority. Um, it's just, you know, there have been some of those types of delays. Um, but we just want people to know that's, that's a great thing to submit for so that you can get your stuff, your ideas out there, right? Yep. You don't have to go write a book or I do it alone. Name in print. Now accepting Rifter for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to double uh, check. Okay, on that I'm one. teasing. <laughs> <laughs> but you can always do After the Bomb content or Heroes Unlimited content. Yep, yep, there you go. Well, we'll see. One of my focuses is changing my habits enough that I can actually get published in 2024. Somewhere. Somewhere. Even if it's self. Yeah, good luck. It won't be here. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, the story I wanted to write for you back in, I think, 2015. I think you published two books about it since then, so. What can I say? Yeah. Well, they were going to be Rifter, but. but you always, you always to update and resubmit. I haven't submitted yet. Oh, oh well. But we, we had talked about the idea, so it was right around the time that I think you were starting to work on Pro Sex Assassins. Oh, uh-huh. 
oh. and it was going to fit in with that thing. Yeah. So it, it may be able to, you know, be a richer content. But anyway, oh, about five minutes ago, I think we talked about sleep. Who slept last night? I slept a little. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you, how it's, often did you check the phone? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you can see me commenting in the in, in, on the there, and yeah. Well, and the, the, it's been a lot of hard work for me and Kev. We've both been working lots of hours. You know, this there's and we're trying to keep make sure everything else is still progressing, right? So um, that's one been one of the big things is Kevin's really moved a lot of things out of my way so that I can focus on. The, uh, the more details, the more, the, the, answering the fans' questions, answering fans' questions, but also getting page. art approved yeah. and coordinating with the, all the artists, yeah. and um, yeah, and, you know, so a lot of the things that people are seeing, you know, like, you know, that the the fan roll dice are beautiful, right? Um, and we've got uh, we're working with the miniatures company, yep. um, so um, that you know things like that we hope to show off soon. soon. Um, but I was but the, all those things I was hoping they were going to be here, but yeah. But no, no, but not yet. But sorry, guys. a lot of these things have. To, I mean, fans hopefully can understand that you know they all have to go through approvals. This is an yeah. officially licensed product, and so yeah, um, licensing's a, a kind of a pain. I mean, you know, I, I will say honestly though, we're working with some great people, yeah. and every step of the way, yeah. I, I well, think that they've really helped us elevate what we're doing, right. and so um, I can't I can't say anything negative really. Um, but but yeah, there is a process where it's not just me and Kevin, you know, running and gunning. Um, yeah, yeah, completely, and, that, and that's where I lose. Right. So, so. Well, some licenses are easier than others. Sure. I, sure. I've heard stories about well, and some. And some are, 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 are bigger than others. You know, there's a lot of moving yeah, parts like, with like this. Like Star Trek. You know. they got to be a little bit stricter. <laughs> you know, what, one of the things we wanted, well, all big companies, you know, yep. including Paramount with, with Turtles, but, um, you know, they are giving us a fair amount of leeway and they yeah. are pointing creative people. So what I've been doing is coordinating a lot of stuff and making initial contacts and getting people, right. artists, writers to send in their... their Remembrances to send in their their you know three concept sketches. Yeah, we've got over what two dozen artists right now that are doing. Oh full yeah, page more, art. Yeah, I think when the dress tributes, ends, we're, so we're calling them art tributes, but they're like full page color art full, tributes. Yeah, like they think comic book splash pages yeah, of okay. of the turtles and characters from like the, the terror RPG bears and, and you know Caesar's um, weasels and stuff. So like I'm that. like making initial contact, lining them up, getting them going, getting the initial sketches, and then we I pass those on to Sean. Sean passes them on to Paramount for. Approval. Right, and then I coordinate with them. I coordinate with the artist yep. for the approval on the art. Kevin gets there. A lot, most of them are also writing a remembrance yep. um, on how you know they were involved with turtles yep. and how the RPG may have impacted them, which yep. again is way more than we expected. Yeah, um, it's but nice. it's been amazing. I mean, yep. who, who knew that we would have this many people? We thought it would be a few splash pages. It's a lot. Yeah. So I mean, we've got, and everyone's been, happy to jump in. And yeah. it's, it's funny. A, a handful of guys that's on our contact list. That have worked for Palladium, like Ramon Perez and Apollo Okamura. You know, we send out the press release, and, and I get a call from both of them. <laughs> you know, going, Kev, I can't believe you haven't reached out to us. Can we? Can we do you know, a page of art? We'd love to. We love the turtles. And I'm like, yeah, no, it, it, you're on my list. I just haven't gotten to you yet. <laughs> so, no, I mean, it's, so it's why are you so slow? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've been working. Oh my God! Oh my goodness! Yeah. Well, that's one of well, the things. Well, you guys always do too much work. Well, one of the things. But that's what passion's about. So. Yeah, yeah. And one one of the things people have asked about, they're like, "Oh, why can't I see Kevin Eastman's art for the foil cover or the painted cover for the variant cover edition?" Well, and the thing is, is we we didn't we didn't want to assume his work. And when we contacted him, and he's a very busy man, yeah. and <laughs> Last Run is going really well for him. Yeah. And he's doing all types of cool stuff, yeah. and. Uh, he was like, no, I want to paint a cover. Yeah. And we're like, oh, exactly. okay, Wait, yeah, like, like painting, the first words, he's yeah. going to paint a cover, yeah. and that's yeah. why we're doing a, that's all, that's the only yeah. reason we're doing variant color covers, is he said, I want to paint a cover, and then Sophie Campbell was like, I want to paint a cover. And we're like, we already commissioned covers, and they're almost done, but we'd love to have yeah, you do covers. Gonna, we're not going to tell you no. Yeah, we're going to tell <laughs> Kevin Eastman and Sophie Campbell, no, I'm sorry. And then, and then the other thing cover. is, we got is, someone else lined is up. very I mean, late in the negotiations, we got the green light on miniatures. Yeah. And so we had already talked to a company yeah. that, we're, that we're working with to do that. Yeah, them. we had a company but, lined up for three months. But yeah, we but we couldn't but start work We until, couldn't start work until we got the, the green light. The green light. And, and so, so then, some, you know, that's just so that fans can understand, like, 
we have had things lined up the best yeah. we could, but you yeah. know, just because of the way these sort of negotiations go, yeah. and we really wanted to do the Kickstarter now instead of waiting until mid next year and, or something. And I want to point out with the miniatures. So, so the cool thing with the minis yeah. is Paramount didn't not have to give us those no, rights. No, you know, in, in big properties like Turtles, Star Wars, Star Trek, Marvel superheroes. Everything is broken out into categories, right. and so there are companies that have the exclusive toy rights, and we had to explain how these aren't exactly toys; these are or action figures. They're they're going to be you know under two inches tall. They're going to be, uh, you know, hell, half the figures will be an inch, inch and a quarter. Um, you know, we we had to explain that you know they're not going to be painted. They're not going to have moving parts, right. and, and then you know. Because they don't our, know our, our niche industry, right? right. right. And, and the fact that our rep at, at Paramount even went to bat for us to push and get that is amazing. So, and, so yeah, getting toys, or not toys, but getting miniatures, getting dice, right? Uh, those these are, are all, deals. They're, they're a big deal. And, and, and part of this is they're, they're turning, trusting us too. Yeah. And so, you know, they don't, we, we're building that relationship. That's why a lot of this stuff, besides the core books, um, and the Game Master screen and one of the sets of dice, they're all going to be Kickstarter exclusives. Yeah. Because that's how we negotiated yep. this. And, you know, not to get too into the weeds with that, but just we just hope that the fans understand, like, we're not, like, intentionally trying to take anything away from anyone. We're so, we're excited about how much we can offer. Because we're, and we're be fans because ourselves. Because we're fans ourselves. And we and know so what the fans they've want. They've been so great to work with. So, been, and that's where, you know, so anyway. I have to say, you know, because I've worked with various licenses, uh, you know, some yeah. that we did, ended up not even taking because it, it looked like it'd be too difficult to work with th that company or film studio or right. whatever. And Paramount's been really great with understanding what we want and unlike a lot of big corporations and I'm sure you know maybe high up they don't give a shit but it seems like they are really tapped into what the fans want and what the fans like and what the fans love so when we would say hey we would love to have this or that or you know like dice individual dice for each turtle and one for shredder and you know a set of minis that are good guys a set of minis that are bad guys they went to bat for us, and they because they know the fans will love these things. Well, when we're done, I'll give you all kinds of cool ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the fun things too is people are, have so many cool yeah. ideas, right? And so we're really excited about it. Like one of the stretch goals that we have that it looks like we're going to get is uh, Fugitoid. So if we get to a million dollars, the stretch goal we have there yeah. is adding Fugitoid to the miniature hero set and. It benefits everyone because you also get Fugitoid stats yeah. in the books. You guys added a lot more stuff. I wouldn't say a lot, but there's some cool stuff. Well, I don't remember added. seeing these pictures. Oh, some of those, oh, some of those were approved yesterday. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah. No, a lot of this is going through active approval. Oh, and there'll be more. And there'll be more on the way. Well, I'm, I'm just yeah. trying to get to the stretch goals. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you still have this one locked. I know, I need to unlock it. I, it, they're they're unlocking. You might as well unlock the next. Well, one. we're in the middle of an interview, so I'm, you know. Yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, let's go to the book itself now. What? I mean, I know you have all the original stuff probably in this office somewhere or in this building somewhere. What were some of the challenges in reprinting it or remastering it? Well, the remaster is a huge process yeah. um, because. These books were made with typewriters and paste up boards, you know, which we're using paste on boards, right? It's what it sounds like, and sending that to a printer. So um, what we've done is we've done high resolution scans of the original paste up boards. So that's, I mean, that's the, if the books existed in any pure format, that's the purest format. Yep. Okay. Um, now, advances in scanning technology, right, and printing quality have improved since 1985, right? So what we're getting, the, what you get out the other side with especially the scans of the art is much more crisp and clean than it would have been in the yeah, original Not printings. blurry like this? Did you guys change the text size? Uh, yes, the text size yeah. is larger. Um, it's good. a different I'm font. Like, I might so, not need my glasses. Yeah, and then we engaged, we also engaged an archival service to take those scans oh, of really? the text and turn it into fairly usable text. Yeah, so it's going to be re-typeset, re-edited, 
tweaked. I went through, through. I went through for and typos notes and, and spelling so. errors, and um, there's a lot of cleanup on, on on a lot of ends there. Um, and you know, there's some things like I, I was going through. I was like, oh, that turn of phrase sounds a little. It might confuse people now. I'm going to use a slightly modern turn of phrase here. You know, um, there's things like that that I've been adjusting just to make sure that it's a, a clean experience for everybody. Um, I mean, I grew up in the 80s, and I'm thinking oh, yeah. it sounds yeah, like, oh, yeah. I want to make sure that's clear. I know what he means, but I want to make sure this yeah, sentence is clear. Even as 10 years ago, language has changed. Right, yeah. so, so there's a lot of little things like that, but but I, I, we're dedicated to Eric Wujic and Kevin's original vision for the books yeah. and the classic play style and feel. Yeah. So, you know, that's not that's not something we're changing. We're not removing anything. For no reason, everything that was yeah. in like the revised TMNT RPG is going to be in there yeah. and more. Yeah, yeah. So. And part of the more is gorgeous. We can't wait to show you more. But you see some color work in some the of the, some of the color art you see in the Kickstarter. That's what is in the book. That's what's in the book exactly. I mean, that's well, I'll have to look at it again because I I got home last night at midnight. I didn't see that. The the, the artist who painted Freddie Williams' amazing covers is the same guy who's painting most. Of the uh, the interior the art. interior art for, for oh and the, the other books. the other person is Luis Delgado Antonio Delgado who's did the colors for the last Ronin so yeah he's, so we're not he's kind of up to snuff as well <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're pulling out all the stops we're having top pros doing the art we're having top pros doing the color um, top pros doing the remaster <laughs> true I mean I don't know it um, was really interesting though because when we did the Cyborgs collection. It was no mean feat. I mean, it, it was a lot of work just to remaster everything, bring it back together. If you go page by page, it's not the, exactly the same, but we wanted to keep the same pacing and feel as the original books. Um, and I think that people are going to have that experience too with these yeah. books. Um, well, and everyone that we've been able to show it to so far um, has been really impressed oh, yeah. with it. So, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's the, the whole thing is that this is, we call it the Redux Edition, it's like the director's cut of this. We want yeah. it to be the most badass version of yep. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yep. and Other Strangeness yet. And so the first book is uh, TMNT and Other Strangeness and it contains the original role playing game. It contains uh, Turtles Go, or Truck and Turtles and Turtles Go Hollywood. And then the second book yep. is called Transdimensional Adventures because it combines uh, the fan favorite TMNT Adventures module which was a, a, a knockout hit with transdimensional uh, TMNT and TMNT Guide to the Universe. So anyone who's a big fan uh, will know that this is all of the source books. Yeah. So th if people are like, is, is this coming back? Is that coming back? Everything's coming back. And it's in the two books, two 256 page, yeah. hardcover, full color, yeah. remastered books. I and mean, we got modern stuff like Index going in there. We have tribute and remembrance and behind the scenes sections for both books. Um, I think people are going to be really blown away when they yeah. see the final product. Well, to give you an idea how excited some of these creators are, starting with Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. So Kevin just instantly uh, uh, offered to do a new new painted cover, which yep. is astonishing. I love Kevin. And then He's a great guy. Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird are going to do the line art on the two um, emerald, uh, what we're calling the uh, uh, Mutagen Green foil editions. Yeah. And that'll be new art by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. Yeah, yeah we got Kevin Eastman is going to be doing the lines, and then um, we're hoping that Peter will be able to do the inks. Yep. So. Um, and, you know, it's our understanding that Kevin and Peter are both going to do right remembrances of some kind, which is amazing. Yeah. And I, I reached out to uh, Larry Elmore. Um, <laughs> and, and Larry heard him. <laughs> Larry was like, Kevin, I can't turn down an old friend like you. And so, of course, he's doing a, a TMNT tribute page. I haven't seen Larry in a few years. Oh, uh, he's doing well. I mean, he's getting up there, and he was... Uh, Is he still teaching? No, I think he's mostly uh, semi-retired, doing art mainly for himself, and then he'll do uh, special projects that strike his fancy, like our TMNT book. Yeah, we're really excited about that. I can't wait that. to see that. No, and we've oh, got Ramon April. K. Perez, we've got a lot of um, artists. That it's funny when you, you know, it's funny when we talk about certain artists, like say Freddie Williams, it's like, is he a comic artist or is he an RPG artist? Well, I mean, you know, he's both, but yeah. um, but a lot of ones that, that people would say, oh, that's a Palladium RPG artist or an RPG artist versus 
uh, you know, someone who's no known for their comics. But uh, we have a lot of artists involved, and uh, some of the ones that uh, are the best friends of Palladium we're still waiting to reach out to because Kevin's just been so busy coordinating and, and, and helping me with all this this stuff uh, with all the other ones well, that I we're constantly being fed I by I think by it's going to keep getting Pedro. bigger. Yeah, it I seems so. Be, uh, I think <laughs> I sure hope so. We, we should roll a die at the end here and figure out which top secret one you're going to reveal <laughs> so that they have more more to look at. Like, I... You're definitely. I, I'm pretty sure you're going to hit a million. I, I, I don't know if you're going to hit two hundred, two million five, but I would like to see that happen for sure. Well, thanks. So um, would we. <laughs> well, I'm sure you would. That would be really nice. That would um, be really great. Well, I was pretty confident when I called. I mean, when when I got the email, I'm like, honey, I got to go now. And she's like, go where? I go. I go. I got to go to Michigan on my next two days off. And it turns out it's 24 hours after they are going to start the Kickstarter. And she's like, it's three hours. I go, no, actually, it's six. Because i got to drive home. Because <laughs> i got to drive home, right? It's right. not a one-way trip. <laughs> and she's like, okay, I have a wonderful one. I love you, That's Lisa. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Right. Um, so, within the two books that are being published, what was the greatest rules change or the most challenging one to make or tweak? Well, again, we're, there we're, weren't really rules changes. Right, we're trying to reserve a, stuff. We're adding a few things. Uh, if you are, want to yeah, keep there, the some, secret for now. Yeah, we'll keep. Yeah, we'll keep most of the secret for now. I mean, one of the things that they're, they're, I mean, we're listening to the fans. I'm a fan. Yeah. Well, right? I saw yeah. that there's more mutations coming. Uh, yes, there's. Yeah, and that's in the in the Kickstarter. So we have yeah. five new muta mutant animals coming it's that have never even it's appeared. Be in, Twenty. Not even in after the bomb, right? These are completely new. Yeah. And it's it's so funny because we we were talking to our our liaison at Paramount, and he's like, "Hey, we should loop in Sophie Campbell because she's a huge fan." Sophie yeah. knew exactly. Oh, I want this, 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 this. Yeah. That's yeah. my wish list, and we're yeah. like. Good. Uh, yeah, we yeah went, we like went with four, that's a great idea. Four out of five, yeah. You know, and so if, if you run out of Kickstarters, you can just go to all the artists and be like, "What, what, what five new mutants do you want to see?" Right. But she knew off like immediately which ones had never appeared in any of our other supplements or other game lines. So that was pretty cool. Oh, I don't think I could do that. Yeah, she. I was, was like, a she's, a, she's a true fan, you know. So she's a true fan. So that's been really exciting. Another thing we're doing is we're uh, one of her ideas. I wanted to add a. A hand-to-hand -hand style to the game. Yes. And I was talking about doing like a samurai or something, but uh, she suggested uh, like something based on instincts for animals, for mutant animals that are more feral. And we're like, oh yeah, a feral hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat style yeah. makes a lot of sense for the ones who aren't formally trained, yeah. Yeah. but want to have a better hand-to-hand -hand combat. And they have natural option. weapons. So these right. outer creatures, when they fight, that was they a, fight yeah. biting, clawing, right. kicking. Right. 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 So um, we're really excited about adding that, and we're updating the gear section because there's a lot more useful stuff that's come out since 1985. No, um, you don't like say. a cell phone, maybe. Right. <laughs> and, and we'll probably that take out that. things like references to 64k bit memory and and just say like it's a computer, you know, yeah. uh, a personal computer costs X amount of money, right? So there's a lot of little things that we're going to do, things, but um, nice little things that'll make it yeah, feel fresh and new. Some people and consider modern. those really big things. So uh, I consider it yeah, smaller. Yeah, we think of them as small but, things. But you know, that's from my point of view where I was doing riffs for Savage Worlds, and so you know. A small lore update, you know, was a big deal to me, right? Um, but at the same time, I, 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 we want to communicate this is the classic game. That's why we don't say huge changes, but it is a new edition. It is an updated, modern, new edition of the game. Uh, but it's the same game. Does that make sense at the core? Oh, yeah. yeah. With so. a ton of bonus fun stuff, like the making of and other fun stories, and like I said, tributes and all kinds of and, artwork. And, and we've had a lot of people, for instance, reach out. They're saying, hey, what about that speed bonus to initiative? Can we retain that? Yes. So there are things like that that are different, you know, but it's just, it's a new edition. It's, 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 uh, that's, I think, well within that kind of a framework. You know what I mean? That's still, you know, homage to the classic. True to the classics. So. so is Shredder getting new armor since it's no longer 1985? He's getting something a little more modern. So no, the the armor, everything is as it was originally depicted. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So I mean, he, had a, good, is, he had a good look. He did. And you could do. Oh, yeah. I, I just know that with there's a lot of different versions. Of, well, there's a well, lot of different yeah. versions of Shredder, they did, right? They did them yeah. in the movies. They did so, different versions. No, these so. are so the the one these thing I will say is the depictions yeah. of the characters are the same. Yep. It's the same. 
classic art by Kevin Eastman, okay. Peter Laird, Jim Lawson, and yep. others, right? But updated with full color. color. And, and, oh, the, and, and, and again, the it. art's sharper, just like in oh, these it's books. Just, it's the art's just sharper it's, with yeah, the just, printing technology. Yeah, I mean, I mean you, just go, um, you go like this, and it's like... No, it's, it's a classic. Look, there's no art on that page, and it's not in color. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's art on that page and it's not in color and you can barely see it. <laughs> you can barely see it? I guess you oh, really do need I glasses. I need my glasses. I can see, I can see the art. <laughs> and death blow. I can't tell you how many times I used death blow as a kid. But but I, I, I want to point out too that when, when Kevin Eastman, when we first came out with this, Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird, they were amazing. They did all the art for these two books. And while some of the art was, you know, panels taken from early comic books, they did brand new comic strips for each of these books. Yes. Um, those comics are, are rarely seen, even in collections. And they'll be beautifully colored. And all this art. They is, are beautifully colored. Yeah, a lot of this is just going through approvals. Yeah, right yeah. Now. people are going to go nuts for this. And, and one, I oh, yeah, didn't realize it was going to be in color. And I was like, oh my yeah, God. We, that's the one thing we did jump the gun on. Yeah, our colorists have been painting since June, to give you an idea. So, so that's how confident so, we yeah, are. Yeah, and, I, and I've been working on, um, you know, the, the relayout and, and planning what it's going to look like even before we had the archival files translate, you know, turned into digital text. I was already doing a lot of that work um, so that we could show Paramount, yeah. right? So we could show them, yeah, hey, what we had in mind. You know, this is what we have in mind. This is what we're doing. So. And that artist, by the way, is a local gentleman named uh, Michael, Michael Majestic. A uh, great guy. He did the cover also to Titan Robotics. And uh, well, he's dabbled of art for us. We didn't know that he had years, done but year, for, for a, a couple of years at least. He was doing uh, comics, uh, uh, color. He was a colorist. On like Transformers and other comics, yeah. yeah. And oh, wow. so, and he's done yeah. animation. He's done animation. He's, he's worked in Hollywood, and so, a, yeah. So he's very experienced, and he really loves working with us. And yeah. and it's like we didn't realize he had this amazing talent for the color work, um, which everyone will see very. I well, mean, and, and, and if you just look at the co the cover art, yeah, you can yeah, see, yeah, that's, that's his work. That's, you know, that's the level, that's the level that of quality he, you're getting. That's how good he is. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and you can see there's the the, the, the the book one, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness, and you can also see his color work on uh, Freddie Williams' line art uh, on for the cover of book two, um, Transdimensional Adventures. So, um, yeah. Any, any help you're going to do, like some signed copies? Yes, so if you back at the uh, oh, Time Lord or, uh, well, everything time. else, but after, so the Time Lord's the one where you get everything. And that is the... So yeah, the higher level pledges, Which pledges will, will be signing books, but we're anticipating that we're going to have so many It's going to be hard to sign as many books as we did say for Titan Robotics. Yeah. So oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. So and in this case, you know, so we're, we're, we're trying to make sure that we can... So what he's saying, he's, he's getting a stamp. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> but the, but if you pla if you if you pledge at a level that has the book signed, it's we're we're only signing the the, the, coil coil the, editions, the mutagen green editions, because oh, we just that's, yeah, that's right fine. because we just feel like that's that's more doable. Hey, we do want to yeah. sign, but and who who's included in those signatures? Uh, uh, me and Kevin are what's technically included. Right? Yeah, okay. In so you got to do the work to get everyone else. It just, yeah. Well, it just depends. We're not sure. Um, I mean, obviously, Eric Woodjick's not here. It's going to yes. be hard to get Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. Uh, yeah, they're on the other side to of the do country. That. And plus, we don't right. want to really even you don't impose them on them. them. They're doing so no, much for us already. Um, um, you know, people go to conventions, take it, take it to conventions. <laughs> You know, and have Kev sign it. Kevin's amazing. Yeah, that's one of the things I would say is, I mean, he, so one of the things that Kevin well, that's finally, a quest. right, it's a quest. Yeah. And Kevin, uh, Kevin Eastman, when we did, we, we, we had a, um, a video. Um, yeah, Zoom call. Zoom call with him. And uh, really great guy. Really nice guy. I mean, I, I, I hear good I stories from Kevin. <laughs> and Kevin's always said, you know, that success couldn't have happened to two better people yeah. than Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. But really, on that call with Kevin Eastman, I was just like, wow. This is a, a the, you can tell he's not just talented, but he's just a good human being. Yeah. And um, so we're really excited about him being involved. In it. And one of the things that he talked about is how much he loves, he says every time he's signing books at every convention, he has multiple people coming up with the original TMNT role-playing yeah. game books for him to sign. 
So that also, I think, shows the testament that the games have stood in time. Yeah. Well, it's like a huge part of those two guys' lives. I mean, it, it was it was one of the first licensed products. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, Kevin, you know, it was help. It was actually integral to them meeting their licensing agent. Yeah. Who helped? That's a whole other story. But helped blow up the turtles into yeah. the cartoons, the toys, the movies. Yeah, I've that heard we that story once. Love. Yeah. So. But, I think I have that on video, actually. Yeah, so <laughs> it's a good story. And then, you know what's fun, too, is hearing Kevin Eastman's side of the story. Because Kevin, you know, Sabita, uh, meant, you know, yeah. talked about the story a little bit when we were in the doing the video call. Yeah. And Kevin Eastman told his, you know, how it ended on the other side when they met yeah. the like Oh, wow. Like that, has to be, that had to be cool. It, it was, was super it was cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was yeah. uh, trying not to geek out too much, so... Kevin right. said I did a good job. But. So we, 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 we've digressed a little bit. Let's get back to the Kickstarter. All right. So we're here to talk about the Kickstarter, really. You, and even though this has all been about the well, Kickstarter. Well, to me, this is about the Kickstarter. Yeah, it, it is. It is. It is. I mean, this is. I mean, this there's an illustrious history. Involved, there's right? amazing, it, it, talent, just phenomenally talented people involved. And, and pretty much what you guys can share about the Kickstarters on the Kickstarter. So we, we try to put everything we can share on the Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, well, I, I gathered that from reading be, it before I went to work yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, There'll be more art best. being shown. Um, there will be eventually covers, physical dice. Um, yeah, we have images the of miniatures, the miniatures. Uh, or at least a handful of the miniatures, the digital. So, spots. how big do you plan on going with the miniatures? Um, I mean, right now I think I saw. Well, let me. I gotta. It's I the think two there's sets. About, yeah. There's about fifteen currently. Uh, uh, sixteen. I yeah. Six, sixteen uh, yeah. plus some stretch goals that are pretty awesome. Yeah. So we want to possibly more. Yeah, we yeah. we want to keep. So one of the things with my flossy that Kevin agrees with yeah. on stretch goals yeah. is. I, uh, we don't want to tank no, the overall not. production right. you with can't. You un can't unachievable that. stretch goals or, or things that we can't fulfill. Um, so just like with Titan Robotics uh, Kickstarter, which we funded and delivered within, what was it, nine months? Um, so uh, that's, the, that's our same goal here is we want to make sure that the stretch goals are impactful and meaningful, but they don't bog the entire production down and we can get them to the fans efficiently and as quickly as possible and that's in a world that isn't efficient or quick right and so we we're doing our best to uh make sure that we can deliver this in a timely manner and uh as as promised um yeah. and that's that's super duper crazy important to me um and uh and so yeah we're working really hard on that so i hope everybody understands you know we, we're trying to have really cool exciting stretch goals um but at the same time uh, you know, fans will say, "Well, can you do a whole new book as part of a stretch goal?" No. Oh no! no, no. no. <laughs> I couldn't see a, new, a whole new book, but I, but I could see stretch goals as things like uh, an additional two-page spread that's like a quick start to the rules, or uh, like a, a appendixing down appendixing down the side for easier thumbnailing and. I was already thinking stuff. about doing that anyways, but well, yeah. This, um, then, I tell you what, uh, being a guy who reviews a lot of books. No, they, that's really. It's one of my favorite features. Players love it. Yeah. Oh, Players, yeah. They, they adore it. And you will, especially with your riff stuff, if you started doing that on the sides of your books. Well, we're already doing a back index. I, I am, I am yeah. uh, actually have prototypes with an appendix. So Yeah, I mean, it, I can't. And I'm not going to make that a stretch goal. If we're I'm, able to include I'm, that, it's just, it's in. I'm know? not a guy that thought he would ever like that kind of stuff because. Well, it's useful. It, yeah. It, well, it's even better when you turn the books sideways and be like, "Okay, I know that that's weapons." Well, and the other <laughs> thing is, is when you have multiple volumes in one book. Yes. And what, that's one of the things that a lot of people may not know um, is when we did things like Cyborg's collection, for instance. Um, well, we didn't like do that. Books, right? It's uh, it three and a half. Yeah. Three and a half. Yeah. So, um, but one of the things is we were trying out certain things that it's a foil edition. Yep. So one of the things that we're trying out is. Um, <laughs> Full page bleeds off the edge. Now our printers said they could do it, but we wanted to see it in action. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm conservative when it comes to stuff like that. So now that that is proven, now I'm I'm more comfortable doing the side indexes, right? Oh, you closed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but that we're going to do something He's similar to that. Man. Where when you get to a new, it's not that bad. I can see the ink. You can see the ink exactly. exactly. Right. So well, that's not the one I wanted. <laughs> But yeah, that's the there. There's a exactly. Full, there's a full bleed. Yes, 
But that's in color. It's going to be in color. And as you, and the other thing is, is that's how we're approaching it. So that when you hit a new book within the volume, that you'll have that original, original title cover, art, right. yep. uh, the original cover art and title page. Well, it's condensed with because it also includes the dedication. So did you do that with the turtles books in the in the two books? What's did, that? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what, what we're saying. Oh, that's what we're doing. We're doing the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm doing that. This is this is uh, yeah. This not is that this was kind of like a test run. Yeah. For what what I wanted to do for the turtles. And, that's and, amazing. I mean, this is a test run of what we want to do with everything moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is we're these are all these are new approaches, but they are the new standard. Yeah. Okay. So I hope fans can understand that some of these are are, are very things. careful steps um, that we're doing, but I don't want to sacrifice yeah. quality. Just like a lot of fans really went gaga over um, the rear index. Right. Oh yeah. You you can't. Yeah. So you know we're, In, we're, indexing is so important. I, and it's it's. I, I pretty much don't play an RPG anymore if they don't have that. <laughs> you know, it's cool. We got it. We got it. It's a modern thing that we're putting in. We got it. So that you know, these are the things that we're excited to bring to the table. That you know, when we say remastered, that's part of what yeah, this means. Yeah, that's part of the remastering is making it slicker, cleaner, more functional, more intuitive to use. Right. So, yeah. You know, plus a bunch of bonus stuff that people are just gonna. Yeah, adore. I think people are gonna be really surprised with the. I yeah. mean, we're we've, we it just keeps growing the yeah. the number of tributes and and tribute art pages. And oh, stuff and like uh, that, so. yeah. So let's see. When you started the Kickstarter, there was twenty seven hundred and sixty three people, and then it started before I got to look at it again, and you've got twenty five or well, two thousand five hundred ninety nine backers right now, and nope, two thousand six hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Isn't that fun? Uh, and you're at 415,000 plus change. Almost 416,000. Yeah. I, I truly suspect by the end of the day you'll hit 500k. Oh, I, I yeah. I think so too. I think yeah. So too. I, probably by you know, five. It was, it was weird because we launched on Halloween Day and that everyone was gone for the night, right? And now yeah. You know, parties, Halloween. all with no, the kids, no, no, well, trick or I know yeah, the, the hardcore fans are going to back right immediately, yeah. but yeah. but I, I do suspect that we had a lot of fans who maybe had emails that they just haven't gotten a chance to sit down and go click on Kickstarter. And really, the word is just getting out, and we implore everyone watching this to you know please please spread, please spread like, the word, share. Um, this Kickstarter ends November twenty eighth, yes. and uh, the Kickstarters will or the Kickstarters the Kickstarter exclusives will not be available. Yeah, let's talk more about the exclusives because it is. There's a lot of exclusives. Uh, I gotta, I gotta talk with Lisa when I get home about how much money I'm spending. <laughs> now you'll be able to expand your pledge level and buy add-ons through Backer Kit for a few months after the Kickstarter. And, and that's the other thing is if you really want to get everything, for instance, um, if you get in on the Kickstarter, uh, it doesn't matter if how low your pledge is. When we do the Backer Kit, you can upgrade as much as you want. So, um, you know, and that's that, that's going to be, that, that backer kit is going to be going until we have the books, um, you know, printed and, and, and shipping to our facilities ship, that yeah. we can then ship out. Yeah. So the, the great thing about that is um, people can, can, you know, if you really want to do like the Time Lord, $888, uh, dollars, then you can save up your, you know, uh, your money. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to get, or if you get the books, but you're like, I can't afford the minis right now. Then just wait. That's cool. You know, uh, we just want to make sure people know that there are those options to get those add-ons. And also, um, you know, the the how do I put this? One of the questions we got was about, you know, do I have to pledge at a certain level to get the uh, like Fugitoid? If we unlock Fugitoid and that miniature gets added to the hero set, do I have to t pledge at one of the high levels to get that? No. Anyone who even just adds the heroes miniature set as an add-on. We'll get that as well, right? We're not going to do like one version with Fugitoid and one version without. Everyone's going to get that. Yeah. And just like everyone's going to get Fugitoid added to their book. Yeah. So just so people understand, these stretch goals actually benefit a lot of them. I and mean, we try to design them so that they benefit a lot of people. Yeah. You know, some of them will only benefit specific print sets or, you know, but, but a lot of them are going to benefit um, anyone who has yeah. that specific add-on. Yep. Okay. What else? So there's Dice Tower. Dice, dice tray. tray, five different sets of dice. Yeah, uh, all of them very cool. Yeah, and, and cool packaging. You can see them now. Um, we have the now that's and that just so everyone knows that the visuals are, uh, you know, still pending final approval by uh, by Nickelodeon, um, but uh, they gave us the green light to to post them last night, and um, 
you know, and that's and that's that's with everything. These are all you know in progress, but uh, we're very excited about it. So when it comes to the books, and those come with a dice bag too. Right? Yes, they come with a dice yep. bag, which is also in the in the full uh, image. color. Dice they look like bag. they glow. They they they're they're very supposed supposed to be very bright uh, resin. Oh, I like that. And then the shredders dice are aluminum plated. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. Um, they're very cool aluminum dice. I've I've rolled them before. They're fun to roll. Um, they're, but they're not as like super heavy as yeah, the one as the dice that are solid like metal. solid metal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the dice tray is cool. The dice tray and tower <laughs> are pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the but, other thing that but, uh, so you, so with the books, you need one with pizza. <laughs> So well, the, the, well, maybe we'll have a stretch goal. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it'd be good for that. That would be a cool stretch goal. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to, to talk about, though, is so we have the two books, and book one and book two, we've already talked about. Book, yeah, I'll just say book one because they have such long names. TMNT yep. and Other Strangeness is book one, yep. and that's got the core rule core book rules, yep. and the two adventure modules. Um, and then TMNT Transdimensional Adventures is book two. So book one and two are both gonna have an alternate cover. Book one has a, a variant cover um, being illustrated. That's the one that Kevin Eastman said he wanted to paint a new cover. Yep. Um, and then Sophie Campbell has already painted um, and it's been through approval process. You can see it on the Kickstarter. Yep. The variant cover for book two uh, but the internals are still the same. Yeah. And the same thing goes with the mutagen green foil covers yep. with art by, uh, you know, Eastman and Laird. Yep. Uh, new art by Eastman and Laird. Yep. And those are again the same interiors, but it's the the, the beautiful foils that uh, people are so happy about. Yep. But instead Sorry. of the, instead of uh, gold like this, it'll have detail like this. But instead of gold, yes. it's going to be it a bright green. Th something similar to this, a bright. Uh, neon green, and then um, the the two the two books that are uh, book one and two that are going to be quite different are the black, white, and red editions. Yeah. So we're very excited to be able to offer these, and it's uh, if you're familiar with the black, white, and red comics style comics, they have black and white interiors, but with splashes of red for yeah. blood or an ominous sunset or yeah. someone's uniform or a blaster bolt, something like that, right? Yeah. And so we're doing the same thing with these books. Um, instead of using Mike Majestic's full color color, we're going to be applying um, a more minimalistic black, white, and yep. red. And all the turtles will have their red bandanas for that edition. Yep. <laughs> That'll look neat. That's what we're trying. <laughs> yeah, we're, you know, again, we're, we're, we're fans of all this stuff ourselves. Yes. We know what other fans love and want because we're one of them. So yeah, we know this kind of stuff is going to be fun and cool, and for people who want, you know, books with the turtles all wearing the same red mask, or and, love the and, old black and white, yeah, more of an homage to the the original black yep. and white book. Um, that's what we're doing because yeah. although the bonus material in in those books will still be color. the bonus material will still be in full color, yeah. correct? Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Yeah. So when you get to that section of the book, it'll still be full color. Yeah. And, and that's another thing we're excited about. You know, Kevin uh, Sambita has all, they pulled out, <laughs> he's so good at this. He pulled out all this stuff and I'm like, Kevin, I didn't know this stuff existed from back when they originally did the RPG and um, blew my mind. And then you know, Kevin Eastman is digging through his archives as well. And I mean, so much stuff that it's never even been scanned. So we're saying, we're, we're talking about, hey, you know, I, we are, we just offered it. It's like, hey, if you want us to scan it for you, we can. I, I feel bad if Kevin Eastman has to go scan it himself or something. But uh, but yeah, I'm just we're really excited about all these archival things that a lot of fans have never seen. So yeah. like, what like, you're like saying, pencil drawings, yeah, before they were inked. Yeah. So what he's saying is you haven't shown him the bunker yet. Oh, you've seen most of it. Yeah, I, I've seen the bunker, <laughs> but it's just what is contained within one little like art portfolio will blow your mind sometimes. Yeah, if you guys ever get to come to a Palladium open house, if and when they ever do it again, you've got to take the tour. <laughs> <laughs> the art that Kevin hides that's Palladium art and hangs the prints on the wall. It's Any print you wanted to see is probably here. And more. <laughs> and more than you've never seen yet. Yeah. 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 I like art. What can I say? Well, that's how you started, right? That's right. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I only dabble in art now, but I, uh, yeah, I started out as an artist. I originally wanted to be a comic book artist and writer. Is and your one uh, um, piece of art still hanging in the hallway? Uh, actually, there's a f couple. Yeah. 
I remember I remember it was yeah. one of the Palladium pieces. I'm like, I know yeah. that. And yeah. He's like, I did that. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> I, felt, I, I felt about that big when I said that. I I, I was uh, I am a pretty good artist. Uh, it's just yes. that. There are gazillions of talented artists out there, and uh, well, you got too much I'm, to write. Exactly, I, I've just really fallen into writing. You know, love so, writing. Well, it's hard to find writers that are as good as Kevin. Well, and and know his material. Right. So I mean, and have the game design chops, and yeah, yeah I mean, it, writing within riffs in Palladium is mentally it has to be kind of. Uh, for anyone who's not Kevin, taxing. I there's, think, I think there's, it's. I think I've lost a few sanity points. <laughs> there, there's. Dev, I mean, there's just so much. It's there's like, a lot. I okay. know a lot about riffs, <laughs> but I only own like 15 books, and that's maybe 25 percent of what's been published. Right? Well, not, not even. There's like 90 I've titles. Probably, I've, I've, there's, there's like 90 riffs titles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, what's that? Well, I took pictures, so I, I, I probably own about. 30% thing. So, you know, I mean, when I was working on the first book that I did, um, Empires of Humanity for um, the Savage Rifts for Pinnacle Entertainment, um, I was ecstatic to have the chance to work on anything Rifts. And uh, I was still, I hadn't quite graduated with my design and production degree yet, and so I was still back at college using my GI Bill, and I felt like some weird alien cartographer. I had a document, I was referencing 27 different books. Yep. With, I had a, the outline had the the quotes, the page number and reference. It was all hardcore research. You know what I mean? Yep. And uh, I just I was like, what am I doing? This is insane. But you know the the new edition of the map that we came out with for Rifts for Savage Worlds, a big North America poster map. Go check it out um, on the Pinnacle Entertainment Group website. It's a I, great I think map. I'll, I'll just I'll bring. I'm it very out. proud of the map. I'm very proud of that map. Um, but the map. I think I the the details in the books. I mean, it took a lot of work, but yeah, it is a little crazy. I was like, okay, that was a lot of wrist books to reference. Oh, I, I, right? I would not want to be a content editor for this line. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's why, for instance, someone like Wayne Smith is so important when we do things like the Rifter. Yeah, yes. um, That's the reason that we, you know, well, and our beloved Julius Rosenstein, who's no longer yeah, with yeah. us, um, or we have Alex Marcinizen. You know, it's we we really you know we have a lot of these guys helping us to proofread everything you know because sometimes you know you may you, you, you blink and you miss you know something that could be yeah, you know, or a, a, a lore, that changes a the world change well and even i you know i mean i've been writing this stuff for you know 30 some years now and i forget some of the things that i, I, I i've written <laughs> that's why i put in a book and you know it's 30. well just for riffs okay Otherwise, forty-two years, baby. Yeah, that makes the most well, sense. Well, he <laughs> he co-authored a lot more of those books, yeah. so or his names on the on the on the yeah. title page for a reason. So. Yeah, yeah. I'll put it that way. You know, and just writing, you know, any kind of role-playing game, we uh, we always say writing role-playing games is rocket science, because you need to know how to write good prose and and set things up and and be exciting, and then you also have to know how to write rules. You have to understand game balance. Um, you There's know, some technical writing in there, game theory. Yeah. All it's, types of stuff. Yeah. it's all kinds of crazy. It is. It's just not like just sitting down and just even in writing your own adventures, which doesn't yeah. touch the tip of yeah. the iceberg. Yep. It's even that's no, that's a great adventure writer who writes, you know, rules, just references the existing rules. Well, that's hard to find. Yeah. You know, so. Well, that's true yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So. So yeah, artists. But yeah, we 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 we, uh, we love great artists. So um, I think people are going to really love that. That's going to be the thing that's going to jump out at you. You know, anything else that that we're doing um, that I'm working on with the remaster, I don't want it to be crazy noticeable. I want it to be subtle, because this is an homage to the classic books, right? Yep. Um, that's the entire intent here. Yep. So when do let's see, let's see. You probably already know off the top of your head. When do the secret Secrets start getting revealed. Well, we can't tell you that. Then it wouldn't be a secret. <laughs> I'm not asking what the secrets so are. Is that? Um, probably when we hit five hundred thousand or seven hundred fifty thousand, I'll start revealing more stretch goals. I don't like to get too far ahead of that. Yeah. Um, I like to to follow the flow of the campaign. Um, but uh, we do want to make sure that there's exciting things that people yeah. can so be today. excited to share. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, maybe. 
um, that people can share with their friends and, and, and stuff like that. And yeah. We do appreciate everyone sharing everything through word of mouth. Yeah. That's the Very biggest thing. So. You can't replace that. So, um, as I think I said in my, my update, the first stuff to be posted. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, because it's funny, you, you, you tend to think, gosh, everyone must have heard about this, or because you've seen hype about it in, in six or ten different places. But inevitably, we always hear from people whenever we throw any kind of Kickstarter or crowdfunding or special sale, how, oh, I can't believe I missed it. And it's like, but you're you're a Palladium Psycho fan, super right. and fan. That's, and that's and how can you... And they miss it because let's face it, our our lives are busy. So please, and we're doing everything we word. can, and working with marketing partners and promotional partners, yep. um, and uh, wonderful people, people like Chris Landauer, yep. um, who's helping us with comms on the project. Um, one of the things I will say too is is um, getting in on the Kickstarter is a big deal because a lot of this stuff again is Kickstarter exclusive. So please do share it with your friends and your old buddies that you used to game with because. There will not be another chance to get a lot of these yeah, things, I'll, right? I'm going to be honest with you. One of the reasons why I'm thinking about it is the miniatures. Oh, sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're super I mean, excited, I mean, and, and and the big the big ones are the the foil editions, the the mutagen green editions, the variant covers, yeah, and then the miniatures and the and the, the all the dice from fan roll. Those are all Kickstarter exclusives. I don't so. I don't know about the dice, but they're cool. <laughs> I have a suitcase of dice. My wife might actually yeah. put them in a sock. <laughs> and, and beat you with them. Beat yeah. me with them, if I'm, especially some the aluminum damage. ones, because they probably got some weight. <laughs> and they might even or cut sharp edges. Yeah, yeah. they <laughs> might even cut. I'm, I no, I, I have. Yeah, I don't know how I got so many dice to be honest. Because you're a crazy no gamer. Does. Yeah, I didn't start. Most that. gamers have trunk well, loads of dice. I I need D4s. Caltrips. I I only have eight D4s. Yeah, there you go, Ninja Caltrips. I'm serious. I, my wife weighed. <laughs> she weighed the dice. Aluminum I have plated. 32 pounds of dice. Yeah, I believe it. And well, let's not even go with miniatures. I used to I used to uh, manage a Games Workshop store. I was a again a huge tabletop wargaming fan, and I had the sickness for a long time too. <laughs> the sickness. <laughs> I have the uh, boxes and boxes and boxes of miniatures. <laughs> Uh, so, to show for it, so about five years ago, Lisa decided to take count. I have eighteen thousand unpainted. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and she you're did, very uh, sick. <laughs> she did not count the ones that are not assembled and still in box. You were very sick. Well, <laughs> so. Fortunately, well, what are you doing here? You should be right. at home painting minis. <laughs> I should be at home. You start a mini painting channel. <laughs> I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it is very difficult for me to paint a miniature in less than an hour. Very difficult, uh, and even at an hour, I want to put more time into it. We, we, she actually did the math. If I painted forty hours a week for two years, I wouldn't finish. Was it slap chop? Have you heard of that? Yeah, I've heard of slap chop. I'm thinking about just spray painting some and dipping them. Yeah. Yep. I think I think I'm gonna do that. Is army painter. Yeah, army painter does yeah, some of that. They're, 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 some really good. Their dips, oh, their dips gosh. are good, but I they're a little pricey for me, so I just use stuff from Lowe's. Sure. And then I, then you can get even more shades. Right. Um, or if you want like a red hue on it, you can get a red a red stain. It works works well. Uh, and. I haven't dipped in a long time, but I dipped a whole bunch of Starship Trooper bugs, and they turned out really, really well. Oh, cool. Dipping is good. And yeah. some people have asked, so I have done a couple of painting videos, and some people have asked me. Not to do anymore? No. <laughs> no. So I am not. Like, Please, for God's sake. I am not like Serastro or any of the really good no. painters. Like, Serastro is the Bob Ross of painting sure. miniatures. He really is. I'm not like him at all. In fact, I do things when I'm painting, like talk about the weather outside, because I don't know what the heck to talk about. <laughs> like, here's how I do this. Oh, it's snowing. <laughs> and people are asking me, like, when are you going to finish painting this model? I go, oh, I finished that like five years ago. <laughs> like, I guess I didn't finish the tutorial. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, uh, I didn't, you know, they, they weren't that popular at first. And then people are like, mm. you're going you're gonna to finish this? Or, you know, it's like I painted a a monk for a uh, war machine it was a solo figure and they're like are you gonna paint more and i'm like really i'm not that good a painter 
And it's like a two hour video. Yeah, but maybe that kind of works to your advantage because yeah. you're kind of a newbie just like they are. And so they can relate to what you're doing and you may be pointing things out that a more experienced painter has kind of forgotten oh, about. They just do it naturally. Yeah, there's that. That's why I, I'm going to get back into the assembly videos too. I miss doing those. They're, they're interesting. And actually, one of the first ones I'm starting with is the Glitter Boy. Hmm. Cool. Well, you gave it to me at Gen Con. I haven't touched it yet, but I, it, it's there. I'm going to open it up and assemble it and teach people how to do it. And I might even paint that one on camera. Cool. We'll see. I'm no, I don't airbrush, guys. So if you're looking for airbrush, no luck. Um, well, what else do we want to talk about? Anything? I mean, you um, got 27 more days. Maybe I'll come back up Black Friday weekend. I don't think I'll be able to. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you, you maybe just standing out yeah. front. No, I'm, I, work, I work in retail. I don't have Black Friday weekend off. <laughs> We're not even here. <laughs> Hello? Kevin? Somebody? Sean? Well, I would, call, I would call first. I'm off that Monday, I think. No, I'm off that Tuesday. But anyway, well, guys, I hope you found this entertaining. I think they're done. Well, I do want to mention, I don't know when this is going up. It, Probably it, tonight. It, oh, well, in that or case. Maybe as early as, well, okay. Depend, so the traffic here was not that great. I will probably not get it edited tonight. I'll probably get it. I'll, I'm off tomorrow, so I will probably post this tomorrow. That's fine. I just want to mention um, other cool sales we have going on. Oh, yeah. By all means. We it, have. Subscribe, guys, to their email. It, it'll go a long way for you. Oh, it's a very cool. Email. Follow them on Twitter or Instagram, whichever one. Or I'm sorry, X, Facebook, Facebook. Yeah. yeah. I don't get your Facebook posts for some reason, huh. but I, I get the Instagram and I get X. Hmm. Um, and, and they post their sales and stuff all the time. But yes, go ahead. But, but, but we have uh, for those of you who are into um, PDFs and, and, and digital books, we have a Palladium Apocalypse bundle of holding going on right now. Um, where you get mm. Systems Failure, I think all the Dead Rain books, uh, Splicers, um, I don't remember if Nightbane's part of it, I don't think so. But anyways, it's a great, it's a great deal, it helps a, a good charity, worthwhile charity, and uh, I mean you get, it's called a bundle for a reason, you get this pile of books, uh, super cheap, probably in the neighborhood of two, three bucks a pop. Um, it's awesome. Check it out. Uh, we have links on our website to it. Um, I'll post it. I think there's there's links to it on uh, Drive Through as well because the Drive Through is their their partner. And then Palladium has its annual Christmas surprise package offer going, and that's a pretty nifty thing. Uh, we've been doing it for 25 years. Originally, when we first did it, it was just supposed to be a one-shot, and people loved it so much. We said, "Oh, we'll do it again next year," and then oh, we'll do it again another year, and 25 years later, we're still doing it. And it's cool because the way it's set up is you never know exactly what you're gonna get, but we, we put in product that is in a wish list that you send us. And then if you want autographs, all, you know, me, Sean, and the available staff, um, and, and whatever freelancer happens to walk in through the door, we corral them to sign books. Kevin does. <laughs> <laughs> if, if anybody comes by, he's like, go sign a bunch of books. <laughs> uh, because you guys love it. Because the fans love it, yeah. And uh, again, it. It, it's a way of getting books at basically, you know, 40, 50% off, plus they're signed, plus, you know, I might do a dragon head sketch or something in, in them. And, and he does do that. Um, yeah. And we read your letters. Yes, a lot. We of read the write, comments. Write letters, and we, a lot of times we'll respond. Yep, so, I, I just got one today. We can't always if they do like it. you. Well, we can't always do it. Sometimes it's like, oh, there's like three great letters today, but we've got like 20 grab bags today, yeah. right? Well, and, and, you know, yeah, and so don't don't write too. them the week after Gen Con. <laughs> or, 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 but I mean, no, these are comments you can put in your in your order. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we had a guy just today. You haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. Who said, Kevin, if you read this, and I'm like. I read every single one. Yes. So uh, I don't like Sean was saying. We don't always have time, depending how busy we are, to respond to to, all to, to to put in a little note or or that kind of thing. But we also in our weekly updates, and I'll start doing it soon, is we will write 
excerpts from what yes so that's one thing people. if you do a oh, surprise good. package definitely subscribe to our newsletter um, which you can do on our website yeah. um, because then you can actually see the responses Kevin might is very likely to respond to you there or yeah. a similar comment yeah because um, we'll take excerpts question. we say we, we just put your initials in and what part of the country you're from or part of the world you're from and uh, and yeah I'll, I'll answer or make a comment on, on what was asked of us or stated and it's fun and we love reading them anyways yeah uh, thank just you. just keep them brief not you know the ones who send us a page or three yeah those are hard <laughs> to, okay, so let's back up to the PDFs real quick so I don't own a Kindle are they Kindle friendly or is there a way to make them Kindle friendly that you're aware of I have no idea. I don't I mean, think, I don't think, PDFs. I don't hey, think if so. You guys PDFs. Th no, there probably is a way. But when I had so when I had my tablet, I tried doing like real books on PDF and I somehow did it through something to get it to my tablet and I'm pretty sure Kindle's better at that. So if you guys know how to do that, please post a comment. Oh yeah, good idea. Oh yeah. But cool. no, I mean um yeah, they're they're. I mean, they're, they're standard PDFs. So uh, I'm sure there's if, a way if there's to do an easy it. Way to read it on there, then you should be able to. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a way to. I don't know if Kindle is just Amazon exclusive or if there's a way to. There's got to be a way. I can't believe Amazon would be obtuse like that. Maybe. maybe yeah. never know. Well, and I just want to add too that you know we the grab bags are our gift to you, our our fans and regular customers. So we don't. You know, it, it's it's technically sort of a grab bag. But we just don't we don't throw stuff in there that you wouldn't want we don't throw stuff in there that's just junk uh or isn't selling because our stuff sells really well so that's hard to find anyway I'm um trying to, i heard recently a story about one of the grab bags and i'm trying to remember what in the world was in it and i cannot well there's that. been some you know they, they were cool they stuff. were ecstatic yeah. oh yeah because we we read the, the the list we read the comments and we try to give people what they want even crazy stuff i had a guy who, uh, and he was tickled pink to get this. He wanted my left shoe. And I happen to have an old pair of shoes. He gave him my left and shoe. And so I signed it in a silver paint pen and sent him my left shoe along with, you know, some books. We didn't just send him my stinky shoe. And uh, and then the, the guy went online, I guess, and talked about it and, and, and was all happy and it, there was all kind of comments on it. And like a couple years later, someone else wrote me and said, can I get your left shoe? Which I happen to still have. Your right shoe? For some reason. Or my right shoe? Yeah. And I'm like, yes, sure. Of course <laughs> you still had it. You I keep everything. Them, I sent them my other shoe and, I mean, you know, please don't be asking for shoes and articles of clothing, but uh, unless that's what we're selling. But I mean, we aim to please <laughs> is what I'm trying to get across here. <laughs> but no, sometimes people have gotten, they're like, oh, I'm a huge Robotech fan if you, and I have all, you know, or I have, I'm a huge um, fan of riffs and I have all the books, you know, and they're like, you know, if there's anything else you could send me and Kevin will go find like a printer negative and send it to him. Oh, and it's yeah, like, hey, yeah. this is a one of a kind thing from back when this, this, yeah. this book was originally printed. Yeah. And yeah. so we've had fans go wild over stuff like that because yeah. they never expected that. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's not in obviously not even in the store that you can go buy a lot of that stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're kind of crazy, but it's 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 fun and uh, it's kind of like a Christmas package. That's what we call it a Christmas surprise because you send us a list of like twelve or fifteen pr products that you want, and you don't know which of those four or five or six, depending on the price of the item, which of those products you're going to receive. So when that package arrives it feels like a Christmas present because you have no idea what's in it. You just wrote your list of Santa and you don't know what Santa's Yeah, and, and likewise, you can, you know, it's a great way to order stuff that you, uh, or, or request things that, you know, your, your gaming guys, now you never know if you're going to get exactly that, but, um, you know, whatever products you get, you can hand out to your game group or to your favorite game master or to your Uncle Bob, who's a big time gamer, and you know he hasn't gotten the latest book. You know that kind of stuff. It's 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 just we love doing it. I love Christmas. It's my second favorite ho holiday after Halloween, and uh, you know it's uh, we love doing it. So take advantage of it. Oh yeah, and and back to how much they love things. So I don't know. I think it was two thousand and one. I I I called the store to see if they had uh, some kind of approved play program, and. I didn't realize it at the time, but Kevin answered the phone. 
And he's like, no, we don't really have anything like that. Um, when are you doing this? Next week at Origins. He's like, well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then I hung up the phone, and I'm like, wait a minute. That That's Kevin. <laughs> he, he introduced it. It didn't even click, because we... Hi, guys. Meet the Nibbles, who's going to go down. <laughs> she just did, decided not to go down my back, so... We'll do this for her, so she's comfy. Uh, thanks for watching my video, and I appreciate it. Uh, please, please hit the like button uh, and and share it if you you know know somebody who might be interested. And of course, there's always Twitter and the Facebook thingy. And soon I have a newsletter coming that'll be down there or in the link below. And my kitty cat loves that idea. Uh, so anyway, uh, there was one more thing. There was one more thing. Oh yeah, subscribe. Be a part of my community, our community. Let's make it grow together. See you guys at a con somewhere or a local store. Or if I'm driving through the country, maybe a game club. I don't know. You're not going to go knock down my camera. Bye, guys.